we have gained about 37, 38, 39, 4, about 4.3.5 million ounces of eligible ounces. These are not for sale, and these are probably going into mostly IRAs into the Delaware vault. There are some big stackers out there that are collecting 1,000 ounce bars. Rafi Farber introduces the current state of precious metals, specifically silver, and discusses how it is at a historic pivot point that dates back to 2008. He also explores predicting the next intermediate bottom in precious metals and how open interest in gold can be an indicator of this. Silver being at historic pivot point going back all the way to 2008 right now. And when is the next intermediate bottom in precious metals. We don't know exactly, but we do know that open interest in gold is at two-year lows, and it's probably not going to go much lower than this, which means we're probably very near a bottom as lows in open interest. The amount of futures contracts open and unsettled tends to conform or tends to coincide with intermediate bottoms in gold. And silver follows, of course. Comex silver is at 2018 levels, and there are Fewer SLV ounces for the ETF in New York. They've moved to London, whereas a lot of the eligible gold is still heading into the Delaware Depository that stores silver mostly for individual retirement accounts, IRAs. We'll go into that. And annual money supply growth rates are lower now than they were in 1929 when they were at just above zero, which led to the crash of 29. But anyway, on to this week's silver report. Today's Silver Report is brought to you by Fortuna Silver Mines, symbol FSM. Latest news is that the Seguilla project is on track for commissioning in the second quarter. Rafi Farber introduces the Silver Report, which is sponsored by Fortuna Silver Mines. The report includes the latest news on the CI Gorilla project, which is on track for commissioning in the second quarter of 2023. He also mentions that the construction activities are nearing completion despite worldwide supply chain challenges. David Whittle, Chief Operating Officer, West Africa, commented, construction activities are nearing completion despite worldwide supply chain challenges. We are pleased to report commissioning remains on schedule for quarter two, 2023. It's scheduled for the first gold pour in mid-2023, and this will start to affect the company's top and bottom lines very soon. And with any luck... By that time, with all the investments complete, the gold price will be much higher and Fortuna will be able to benefit and leverage, as they say in business parlance. Disclosure, I own some shares of FSM. And of course, do your own due diligence. I said we were around a historic pivot point going back to 2008 in silver. Today, we had a coil, thought it might break up. It broke down instead and we are back at that pivot point. It doesn't mean that if we break below it, Silver is doomed. That's not going to happen because silver, of course, is money. And money is in great need right now because everything is inflated. But anyway, you see here that this pivot point goes back all the way to the highs of 2008, just around 2150. Let's call it that. And the breakthrough of this level back in 2010 led to the top at $50 in 2011. And this was resistance during the bear market in 2013, 2014. Resistance again when the bull market restarted at the end of 2015. Resistance here. And we broke through it again during the run up to August 2020 post the COVID insanity. And again, it was support back here in 2021, 2022. And then we broke through it, but now we broke back above it and we're testing it once again. So we have seven points here. You can count eight, nine, but it's a big number here. And yeah, we might break below it. We might not. Here's why I think we won't. At least we won't significantly. This is the next slide. Gold. This is open interest. The amount of contracts open in the Gold GC COMEX contract. And we are down to just about two-year lows. The two-year lows, I think, are about 423,000, 422,000, something like that. And this is yesterday's numbers, which is recorded on the day delay by Gold Charts or Us. I think we were at 423,000 now, so we were just at two-year lows in open interest. And lows in open interest tend to correspond to lows in the gold price, not every single time. But it is a good bet that we're not going to go much below 420,000 in open interest. And once the open interest heads back up... That means that interest in the gold futures contract, which the spot price is basically locked in at, is going to head back higher. 
which is why I don't think Silver has enough time to break through the 2150 pivot point with any decisiveness. And I think we're going to bounce from here. Could I be wrong? Yeah, I could, but I'm not wrong about the end game. We know that's coming. And I Rafi Farber talks about the Chrome stockpile, which has reduced to 288 million ounces from 400 million ounces since the silver squeeze. He points out an interesting trend related to October 2018 and compares it to the silver stored in the COMEX vaults at that time. Some interesting things at the COMEX silver pile. First of all, we have eligible supplies, meaning supplies that are not for sale. They are draining out, except at one vault, and we'll go into that in a second. The total COMEX stock stockpile is now at 288 million ounces, down from 400 around Silver Squeeze. We're now at 112 million ounces drained out of the vaults since Silver Squeeze. But there's something more interesting about this chart. You see here we're at the 2018 level, about October 2018, let's call it. What was going on back then in October 2018? Look at this. We have, this is the SLV vaults where the silver for SLV is supposedly stored. I was able to go back in the Wayback Machine and they had a capture for November 22nd, 2018, just around that time where you see here the red line is at the end of 2018. And how many vault, how many silver ounces were in the COMEX vaults here for LV at that time. So we have here the New York, the JPM New York vault, the bottom row here in the 2018 list. And we have here 126.5 million ounces about. You see here, the number is for the JP Morgan New York vault. The rest is London and stuff. So it's not counted in the COMEX, obviously. The number is 103,176,000 ounces. So that's a difference of about 23, 24 million ounces, something like that. And when who picked up those ounces, we don't know exactly, but this is a coincidental number. We have the Delaware Vault, which I mentioned in the last silver report. It's still stacking more and more silver. We'll get into yesterday's movement. The only vault to gain silver yesterday was actually the Delaware Vault, and it gained it from other vaults, which translated, transmitted, or transferred, actually, its eligible silver, not for sale on futures, to the Delaware Vault, the International, sorry, Individual Retirement Account Specialty Vault. So, 25 million more ounces in the Delaware Vault corresponds to about 23 million less ounces in SLV. So silver is flowing on net, maybe not directly, from SLV to IRA accounts. This is a very good sign. You see here this final red line just at the end here. I can't really zoom in on these charts because the gold charts or else doesn't let me. But it's about, let's say, 37, 36.5 million. And now we're at 40.5 million. So just from the last month, this is about a month. Just in the last month, we have gained about 37, 38, 39, 4, about 3.5 million ounces of eligible ounces. These are not for sale, and these are probably going into mostly IRAs into the Delaware vault. There are some big stackers out there that are collecting 1,000 ounce bars. As we come to the end of this video, I hope you found it informative and thought provoking. If you have any thoughts or questions about the topics discussed in this video, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest content. See you in the next one.